This is Inside Georgia Southern Football with Chris Hatcher. Inside Georgia Southern Football with Chris Hatcher, brought to you in part by East Georgia Regional Medical Center. Your health, your community, your hospital. The Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Harvey Supermarkets. Come home to Harvey's. bb and t Best bank in town since 1872. Coca-Cola. The Coke side of life. And by Verizon Wireless, the official wireless provider of Georgia Southern Athletics. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And now, here's your host, Terry Harvin. Welcome to Inside Georgia Southern Football with head coach Chris Hatcher. I'm Terry Harvin, coach, back at the prettiest little stadium in America, entering the Southern Conference play. We had great fan support today. It was cheerleader for the day, band for the day. Uh, the Southern Conference baseball team was getting their rings today. A lot of excitement. It was a lot of excitement, Terry, and I, and I appreciate all of our fans coming out, um, especially after a tough defeat we had the week before mm -hmm. on the road versus South Dakota State. Uh, it was a great atmosphere in Statesboro, Georgia. Our kids fed off of it. It was a great night for football, and I was real pleased with our intensity, our drive each and every play. And anytime you suit up in the Southern Conference, you have to be ready to play. It was a, a great victory for our football team to start off conference play 1-0. Um, it's the first time we've done that in quite some time, so we're very excited. Um, again, you got to be ready to play each and every week. Our fans pulled us through. This is the last home game we have um, for four weeks, so it was good to get a big win at home over a, a, a good football team in Western Carolina. Even with the threat of rain, the fans turned out, the student body turned out. It was just a, it was a great day for football. It really was, and we had some first that we'll talk about later on the show with a great defense and performance. Um, great individual performances um, by Adam Urbano and, and Lee Chapel. Um, it, it, again, it was a good night for our young football team to bounce back like they did in a dominating fashion, 27 to three over a, a Southern Conference opponent. Um, we'll take it every single week, Terry. We certainly will. A win is a win. And before I show you those great first half highlights, let's first take a look at the Coca-Cola play of the game. Chapel back into the shotgun, snap back. Has time, floats this right corner of the end zone. Taylor is open, put an eagle six on it. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Well, welcome back to Inside Georgia Southern Football with head coach Chris Hatcher. Coach, we need a good rebound. You talked about that earlier. You want to establish the running game. One thing that has played very well for us this year has been our defense. So let's start off with a defensive highlight. Sounds good, Terry. All right, here we got third and eight. and. Uh, the quarterback decides to keep it, and he is met by Darius Eubanks on a blitz. Yeah, it was a very nice play to start the game. Darius is a freshman, true freshman that is, from Thompson, Georgia, and then he had a well of a ball game. Um, really set the tone for the entire evening. He led the team in tackles today. Team it was good. Too. It was good to see him do that. Number 13, a um, great player. He got a lot of potential, and we're really excited about it. Second 14, ball at the 30. Lee Chapel screen pass to uh, screen pass to Valentine with great blocking by Urbano. Jameer had a, another fine night, six catches um, on the evening, and, and that kind of got his jump started. And then we head into a third and five. Um, another completion from Chapel to Jameer Valentine over the middle for a for a first down. And you know, you kind of sensing a little rhythm on the offense, and we we were working the ball down the field, and then on third and seven, right around midfield. Um, Chapel hits Jonathan Bryant, a freshman out of Cairo, Georgia, for a 15-yard completion. Big third down conversion for us. And then later on in the drive, second and two, Darian Robinson, the freshman out of Athens, Georgia, gets eight yards. We move the ball down the field. Um, however, we have to settle for an Adrian Moore field goal. And I believe as much as you like those kickers, um, he set a Georgia Southern record with that field goal. He certainly did. That's 11 straight games that Adrian has kicked a field goal, and he broke the mark by the great Tim Foley. Later on, we, ha we do have a blocked field goal. We need our offense, to, our defense to step up, and they certainly do. It's first and 10, ball to 16. Well, we had the game in control at this point, and we, we, we execute poorly on our, our, our field goal team. But right here, what a great play, again, by Darius Eubanks to, to kind of stop the drive. Western has great field position. Then on third and six, they try to throw the fade ball to the left corner of the end zone, and, and senior Daryl Pasco makes a great interception. 
um, for the touchback. And at this point, um, I was really, really feeling good about our chances this particular night. It's first and 10 ball in the 20. Uh, Lee Chapel uh, rushes for 11 yards. Yeah, Lee, um, you seem like he, he got a little better from the previous game, made some good decisions with the ball. We get a first down, and then we um, had a lot of success running behind that big offensive line of ours. Darren Robinson goes over the left side over freshman Daniel Few and sophomore Jared Flowers for a big 13-yard gain. And um, you can see we also got a good block by Jonathan Bryan, who made a good catch earlier. So those receivers were doing a little bit of everything tonight. That screen pass really helps to stop the blitzes from the other team. It's third and eight, and Chapel goes to Urbano for 11. Yeah, we had a little middle screen called, and um, it was, again, it was a good conversion down for us to, to keep the drive alive. Um, and Adam, he had an awesome night. He led us in rushing and receiving yards. I mean, he, he's, he's a fine player. And we all know that, and we got to find a way to get him the ball more and more each week. Now, that series ended up in a punt. I'm going to take you forward. It's third and 10 ball at the 43. It's certainly good to see Roderick, Roderick Tinsley back. Roderick had a, um, a really good game in limited action. He's been injured, and this was his first game back of the season. And I think that gave us a little spark on our defensive side of the ball. Okay, here it is, third and goal. Ball's on the 12, coach. Big-time play. Derek Hyden comes up and makes a big-time hit. Western is kind of moving the ball a little bit, and Derek Hyden, the, the sophomore, out of Marist in Atlanta makes a big hit. Dion DeBose, our middle linebacker, another sophomore who's played really well for us, picks up the ball um, and has, a, I think, 57 yards. I imagine he was a little tired. Those linebackers aren't used to running that far with the ball. Um, and it was a big play for us. Stopped another drive. One of the few times Western got inside our territory all evening long. We have the ball, the 38 is first and 10. Chapel sideline pass to Patrick Barker. Yeah, nice play. I tell you, Lee, um, we took some pressure off of him, made some easy throws for him. And Patrick Barker, freshman out of Nice High School down in Jacksonville, makes a nice game. Let's talk about another great freshman. It's third and 11, and what a great move by Valentine. Good route, good pass, good catch. I, I thought this may have been one of the big points to the big keys of the ball game. Um, we find ourselves in third and long, and, and Lee uh, throws the fade ball to Jameer, and Jameer makes a great catch. He, he, he really fooled the corner, um, and it puts us up 10 nothing. Markeith Wiley is first and 10 ball at the 35, shoots the gap. Yeah, Markeith, um, one of our few seniors on defense, does a really, really nice job coming up the middle. Big stop. Here's a great play. I loved it. Almost blocked the punt with his foot, John Stevens. Yeah, John's a, a, a great special teams player for us. Um, you can see he's selling out. He flips over the wedge um, there. And, and almost, like you said, he blocked it with his foot. Um, but I thought that this is really where we took over the game. We get the ball um, with just a little over four minutes to go in the half. And we start off with a great, great drive. We, we were very patient. Adam Urbano runs over the right side behind big Cole Fountain. Uh, Jonathan Lovin and Trey Dunman for a big 17-yard game to get us jump-started here at the end of the half. Let me take you to second and seven right before we score. Lee Chapel feels the pressure. He keeps it. Yeah, I think we, as we talked before the show, I thought Lee grew up a lot. He could have thrown that ball away or taken a sack, but does a nice job darting up the middle. Puts us in great position, and then on first and goal, he finds um, – Gary on Taylor, the one of the, the few seniors, the only re, um, senior receiver that we have for his first career touchdown catch. And it puts us up 17 to nothing headed into half. And that was really, really a big play. Um, we took over four minutes off of the clock, only allowed Western to have 11 seconds left to go in the half. Um, it was a great way to end it. I felt like we dominated from start to finish, especially in the first half. Our guys were very excited. Um, and it's fun to coach a bunch of young guys that don't know any better and to, to feed off of that excitement um, really makes these guys fun to coach. We're going into the locker room leading 17 to nothing. We're going to go to break and when we come back out of the break, it's Coach's Corner brought to you by Knox Pest Control. Welcome back to Inside Georgia Southern Football with head coach Chris Hatcher. Well, we get out of the halftime, coach. We're leading 17 to nothing. So let's jump right into the third quarter. And what a great way to start the third quarter with a great kick return by Ronnie Wiggins. Ronnie Wiggins, a, a senior, does an awesome job. We, we stress special teams performance this week. 
um, to make a difference in the momentum of the game. Third quarter is awfully important to a, a football team, especially when you got a big lead. This gets us off to a great start. First and 10, he has a set at the 46. Yeah, we, um, we come out on the first play, and the screen pass had been good to us. We throw it out to J.J. Wilcox, freshman out of Cairo, for a nice eight-yard gain, and then we end up getting a first down, and then first and 10, we throw another screen pass out to Wilcox for, for a 12-yard gain, and we're moving the ball down the field. And then here you can see we get in the red zone, we come out, with we get a penalty, back us up a little bit, and then third and 10, we complete a pass over the middle to um, Jonathan Bryant for a six-yard game, a little short of the first down marker, um, but we come out and Adrian Mora goes in and kicks a 23-yard field goal to put us up 20 to nothing. It's a three-score game at this point, Terry, and we milked a lot of the clock to start the third quarter. Mr. Reliable, Adrian Mora. Defense highlights, second and 10. Uh, fumble, but it went out of bounds on second and 10, ball to 30. Good play by LaRon Scott, and then Darius Eubanks, he seemed like a ball hawker all night. He's there. He actually recovered it, but it looked like his feet may have been out of bounds. Uh, very nice play because we forced him to a third and nine, and we get great pressure on the quarterback by Brent Russell. Um, um, carry Bonds in there, and um, and we, we force them to, to come out of there and, and punt to us. And as you can see, we were trying to get the ball in Jameer Valentine's hand. They kick a 42-yard punt. Jameer Valentine returns it for 30 yards, a great return to set us up with, with a, another good field position. Let me show you some more defensive highlights. Great sack by J.B. Shippey, Bonds, and Tinsley again. It's third and 12, ball to 26. We had their number all night, and we were putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and I was real pleased overall with our defensive performance. No matter who we put in the game, they seem to play extremely hard. Let me, here's some pressure on the quarterback. Uh, Mr. James meet Josh Rowe. He drills him on this first and 10 ball at 32. Yeah, you know, it's nice. We see it a lot of freshmen make plays. Josh Rowe, freshman linebacker out of Opelika, Alabama, number 10. And um, one thing when Josh gets his eyes set on you, he really brings the pop, and that was a, a great hit. The very next play, Mark, Markeith Wiley just shoots the gap, and you talk about a great hit. Yeah, Markeith got through there, and um, they, he looked like he was surprised, and he makes a, a a big tackle for a loss and um, we were getting good pressure up the middle and that's something that concerned me going into the season is how our defensive line performed and they really played good tonight. Now we did have a turnover on special teams but our defense really held up here. We thought you were going to pitch a shutout here but uh, considering they only gave up a field goal when the ball was at the 14, I was pretty impressed. Well I hate to even show it um, but we, we, we put them down there in a bad situation. We fumbled the punt and um, they get good good field position but our defense held and um, they got three points, and that would be all Western Carolina would get on this particular night. LaRon Scott almost got a pick six here. I believe LaRon wishes he had this one back. He made a great break on the ball, read the play perfectly, and um, I guess that's the reason he's playing defensive back. We always kid those DBs for not having good hands, but LaRon's a sophomore out of Warner Robins via Butler Junior Community College out in Kansas. Great play, and um, I, I really wish he could have could have finished that one off. Let's wrap it up with some offensive highlights. Patrick Barker, an eight-yard catch. Yeah, Pat's been playing good, and th this was a, a really good dr uh, drive for us. Um, we find ourselves in a fourth and one, decided to go for it, and um, we get great blocking um, by our offensive line, and Adam Urbano gets his first rushing touchdown of the season, a 13-yard run up the middle to really end the scoring at 27 to three. Um, we, we controlled the game again, Terry, from start to finish. We, I think we held the ball almost for 40 minutes. Um, it was a, just a really good night, and I'm really proud of our football team and our coaches for, for bouncing back and um, getting off to a one and zero start. Great victory. Here's the Harvey Supermarket's game-changing performance. Chapel out of a shotgun on third and 11. Jump ball going for Valentine. Potter and Eagles six on it. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Valentine with his third touchdown of the season. Well, welcome back to Inside Georgia Southern Football with head coach Chris Hatcher. Coach, we always say it, let's put this one in the books. It's time to look forward. We're headed to Elon, second Southern Conference foe. It's going to be our first road test in the Southern Conference. We're facing a, a quarterback in Riddle. That's a known quantity. He's very good. One of the best wide receivers in FCS up there, and they've you know, they've gotten us down to the wire these last two years. Well, they've had our number, Terry, and, and they have a mighty fine football team. Pete Limbo, their coach, has done a good job. They're a top-ranked um, opponent. I, mean, I think, you know, headed into this week, they were anywhere from 10 to 15 in the polls. 
big game. Our boys know that. We're excited about the opportunity. And our main goal, Terry, is to get a little bit better next week than we were versus Western Carolina. And that's about all you can ask of a young group of boys. But we're excited. Um, we got a chance to go make a mark and be a, a contender in the Southern Conference with a with a good showing up at Elon this week. Speaking of good showing, fans, we need you to make a good showing too. If you can make the road trip, we'd love to have you there so we can pull out a victory just one more time. If you can't catch, if you can't go to the game, catch it on the radio or go to the website, georgiasoutherneagles.com. Special thanks to Party Harbor for the Eagle Fun Zone. That's a great place. And Sonny's Barbecue, wonderful food in the press box, certainly not helping my diet. Folks, keep Georgia Southern on your mind. For Head Coach Chris Hatcher, I'm Terry Harvin. You've been watching Inside Georgia Southern Football. Inside Georgia Southern Football with Chris Hatcher, brought to you in part by East Georgia Regional Medical Center. Your health, your community, your hospital. The Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Harvey Supermarkets. Come home to Harvey's. bb and Best bank in town since 1872. Coca-Cola. The Coke side of life. And by Verizon Wireless, the official wireless provider of Georgia Southern Athletics. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. 